Hey YouTube, welcome to this next installment of the Avion blog. So today we're going to have a brief look at a Fujitsu Siemens LCD monitor that's gone bad. Uh, and the first thing I noticed is when the customer bought it and they bought in just the power supply board, saying that uh, I think it's the swollen caps that's the problem. So I took a look, I did find some of the capacitors are badly swollen, so they're probably, well I'm pretty sure they need replacing. And of course there was uh, further damage to be found when I went through the board after re recapping the board and testing all the capacitors, the ESR, etc. And I'm um, basically going to show you what my findings were. So let's take a look at the Fujitsu Siemens power supply board. Hey YouTube. So just so you know what's going on over here. This is a power supply that was bought into me from a Siemens, Fujitsu Siemens uh, LCD monitor, uh, which was having a bit of an issue. Um, when we plugged it in, we were just getting a clicking noise and we weren't getting power on either of the two rails. Um, just so you know what's going on over here, this is actually the high voltage backlight inverter control board, um, which basically has two MOSFETs on it, which you can see here, we've removed them. Um, <clears throat> the board wouldn't start or have any energy when we first tried it out, but after removing that and of course replacing these three power caps over here which were swollen and when the ESR was checked it was high. Uh, these were also all checked, they're all fine. Um, so after doing that, if you go along to your your actual 5 volt rail, you'll see we're getting 5,137 volts out now from the power supply, but obviously we've got no backlight. So basically these tiny little uh, dual channel MOSFETs, uh, see if it'll focus on it. Come on, you can do it. Or you can't, I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, those little MOSFETs need to be replaced on this board. Then this little board can get placed back into the circuit over here and then we can test out the power supply properly. So yeah, that's um, another one of the issues which can be experienced on the power supply boards for um, computer screens, etc. This is, like I say, a widescreen LCD monitor. Um, not LED, obviously, because it does have the proper backlight inverter. So as you can see, we've got the 5 volts power rails fixed. So this would actually power the logics of the board now, but we wouldn't have backlight because of this uh, other section that needs to be fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and order those parts, and uh, we'll put it back together again once the parts arrive, and we can continue with this video. While we're on the topic of switch mode power supplies, I'm going to go through a few things with you guys when it comes to power supplies and fault diagnosing them. <clears throat> the first thing you need to look for, like for instance this power supply has a permanent standby voltage um, being, what, what is it, 5 volts, okay. That 5 volts is permanently on. Some, some of these power supplies have actually got two different subsections, like a, a smaller transformer. Um, which just basically provides the standby power and then when you switch on then it activates the main power supply. Ones like this however, when you put power here, you're going to have your DC on this capacitor over here. This is the capacitor that you need to be careful of. This capacitor can store a tremendous amount of energy and just to show you guys that I'm going to power this unit up and do some measurements. So okay, power supply is powered up so it's live so I know basically in this white area over here is quite dangerous voltages and it's DC. So basically we throw up our multimeter onto DC and remember we got 230 in and if you have a look on what, what, what we're getting over there we got 306,1 volts DC sitting across that capacitor. Now the problem comes in even when I unplug it one two three unplugged okay this potential sits on this capacitor for anything up to hours, depending on the circuitry in place. Um, as you can see, this one's going down pretty quickly, but um, it's still enough to give you quite a knock. So this is why we talk about being careful when working on switch mode power supplies. So the first thing you need to do on a power supply such as this, whereby it has a permanent 5 volt standby, is you look for your standby voltage. And in this case, we're expecting to see it here and uh, after replacing those caps, yes, we did find it. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go onto the computer or onto the whiteboard and actually show you guys the very, very basics of how a switch mode power supply works. Basically what happens is we have our AC coming in. That AC goes through a couple of filters, fuses, whatever the case may be, through a bridge rectifier, converted to DC, high energy DC, 300 volts DC. 
that DC is then switched using MOSFETs or whatever topology they're using it is then switched through here with a feedback from this optocoupler over here um, to basically give you your output voltage on the, other, on the other end of this transformer. That output voltage then goes through a form of rectifier, it's basically a dual diode and then capacitor to smooth it out. <coughs> That's a pretty common way that the switch mode works. Forgetting about the high voltage side of things here for the backlight, I'm talking just about the pure DC for like for instance the 5 volts. So what will happen is over here we'll have one of these coming out It'll then go through this little guy over here, which is basically like a dual diode, a bridge, and then smoothed back to DC. It doesn't need a, a big fancy bridge because these, these are switched at rather high frequencies, so it's quite easy to smooth them back out to DC. These capacitors over here are what are doing the DC smoothing, and then you'll get your nice clean DC, 5 volts DC, um, coming out from the capacitor after all is said and done. That's the bare basics of a switch mode. <coughs> now when we take a little bit closer look at the power supply. Um, okay. Here you've got your mains 230 volts in. We have a fuse and a couple of mobs and stuff for protection. We have a basic little uh, coil basically just a bridge rectifier. DC capacitor, then this high voltage DC is basically applied to the transformer through a switching MOSFET in this case. Um, the switching MOSFET is controlled by the little IC on the board over here. This circuit is all working now. As I said we've, do, we've removed the backlight section and that has got our 5 volts uh, standby voltage running here quite nicely. So forget about all this section over here. Let's just concentrate on the actual DC side of things. <coughs> so it is switched at a high frequency through the transformer. It is then taken on the output over here. One side is placed to ground. The other side goes through two, a two diode pack basically. It's a, a single device with two diodes inside it and then it's smoothed with your DC basically. A couple of chokes and resistors just for doing little splits off here and there but uh, that's the very basics of it and then that is then passed out onto whichever boards um, are, are needing the 5 volt rail voltage. Now <clears throat> like I said this power supply stays on. The backlight doesn't actually turn on until the device is switched on so it has a completely separate little circuit over here but it does have power. The power is applied to the backlight board, um, in this case this little board over here which I'm waiting for spares on which sits in here. It is applied to this little board um, which then switches the smaller DC voltage through these two little transformers over here creating our two high voltage backlights um, outputs for the backlights. Uh, so this is basically the backlight inverter uh, if you wanted to call it that. It's taking a small little DC voltage and converting it into a higher AC voltage um, and pulsing it onto these uh, CFL tubes over here. <coughs> Again, just a little control IC and then these two little dual MOSFETs for switching. Uh, these MOSFETs, by the way, can handle uh, 60 volts at about 5 amps. Um, but obviously it's just switching, it's not continuous load. And that'll run on there. And switch between the between the two devices we actually have four um, MOSFETs so that'll switch the channels on these transformers and create our two high voltages over here. That is looking at it on the absolute bare basics of how these things work. Um, many people understand the basics of analog power supplies but not of switch mode. Uh, switch mode does work a little bit differently but um, it's not very complicated once you get the hang of it. Um, it's quite easy to understand how the basic switch mode power supply actually functions. I'm just going to bring another switch mode power supply to show you guys. Uh, one preferably without all this backlight crap in the way or, or should I say a simpler uh, switch mode power supply so you guys can see the functionality of it. Okay, just as in another example here we've got a different switch mode power supply. Again you get your mains, your basic filtering, your bridge rectifier. There's usually a big cap on here. 
then this is then fed to this uh, controller which in all, in all effects is actually a MOSFET um, and it is switched through the um, transformer to this side which is the DC side now on the DC side over here you'll see they don't have the um, sort of two diodes in one they've actually got singular diodes for your different voltage rails and then your capacitors um, so basically it's smoothed out and then you'll have your various 5 volts, 12 volts etc coming out quite a simple uh, problem free design it does work quite well um, but uh, yeah for all the positives that there are with switch mode there are a lot of negatives uh, user repair is a lot harder and a lot more difficult to understand and of course you have your 300 volts of DC sitting on this capacitor that sits in here so it can be scary for those who aren't familiar with it uh, just for those who aren't sure this is actually a Samsung um, TV power supply uh, it is a working power supply uh, it's been retasked put back into the spares drawer uh, it just needs a capacitor replaced as I've basically scaled that capacitor over there for use on another device which needed one and um, <coughs> yeah switch mode power supplies boys and girls well we're working on this uh, power supply I just wanted to check because I'm battling to find the correct MOSFET so we're going onto the negative rail over here and then I'd like to check the positive rail on this uh, power circuit to see what sort of voltage we're sitting with here so okay we've got 17.2 volts um, so basically that 17.2 volts will be the voltage switch from this point over here and at this point over here so that's the 17.2 volts which goes into the the um, the driver board this little board over here um, and then that is switched on the MOSFETs uh, to the various inputs of this transformer firing of the high voltage side like I said we do have our 5 volt rail working now so if you check the output on this diode over here you'll see there's our 5,137 volts so that's all good and like I said uh, we are getting our 17 volts coming through to the inputs of these transformers so yes I'm quite certain that those two little MOSFETs are the issue if we replace those two MOSFETs and get this board back in technically we should be able to have the backlight inverter of this power supply back up and running nicely um, again please be cautious when working with these boards you know like now it looks like I'm pretty close but I am probably a good 10 centimeters away from the board because I don't want to be in contact with any of the live stuff I also don't want to be in contact with anything within this white area over here in the center because this is all mains or higher potential so it can be quite dangerous again these transformers here might give you a bit of a kick on the output right now it's not running so there's nothing happening over here but um, it's still something to be aware of and not to play with unless you actually know what you're doing so guys I'm 100% certain that these two little um, dual channel and dual end channel MOSFETs need to be replaced the board does look like it did get quite hot there um, if you look at it so yes we're going to order some of those put it back together again reassemble and hopefully we'll have a nice working monitor